I could hold off as long as I possibly could. This is Travis Brown, the editor for Vavil um, Mixed Martial Arts, um, here to talk about UFC 184 that just ended a very, very fast. Um, it was a main card that was a fury, and uh, it is right at 11.13, uh, my time here in the beautiful, snowy Midwest, um, I was not able to make it out for Invicta or UFC. Um, I am stuck here in the snow. Uh, but I wanted to talk about the fight that we just watched, which was between Bantamweight champion Ronda Rousey and the number one contender, Kat Zingano. Uh, this was a fight that I was really hoping to see push the pace of Ronda Rousey and um, and really bring out that championship pedigree that we all know. I mean, uh, not championship pedigree, but that championship ability that we all know that she has, but she really hasn't had the opportunity to showcase. And I mean, yes, yeah, she's rowdy. We love the nickname. It fits her perfectly. Even though there's all, there's another rowdy in the UFC. She was the first one in the UFC to have that nickname. I'm not saying she was the first one to have that, that you know, uh, for the women in general. But and we need to call this woman the Black Widow, you know, or something. Something spider-oriented. Like, because I'm not trying to compare her to Anderson Silva, but I've never seen women fall into the hands of, the, of, of what this lady is capable of doing so easily. And it could not have been more apparent than what we just saw with Alpha Cat Zingano. I truly, truly enjoy watching Alpha fight. Um, even when, uh, bef- when they announced that she was coming into the UFC as part of the, uh, the 135 division, I was very excited to see that because I had seen some footage of her um, on the um, regional circuit. So I was ecstatic to see that she was going to be uh, part of the, the, the that fresh first crop of 135 fighters um, in the UFC that, you know, that Ronda kind of is, le- it, well, not is kind of, is leading uh, the pack of. And I knew she was one of those fighters that um, would be up in a contender's position sometime. And, yeah, you get past all the, you know, the fighting of Misha Tate, and and all and the Liz Carmooch and all the other fights that Ronda's had so far, uh, Alexis Davis so far, you know, in the UFC, and they've all been worthy opponents for sure. But I thought Cat, just like everyone, <laughs> and if you don't believe me, just go back and rewind everything that you've seen on everything about this fight tonight. And um, you know, we were all saying that Cat presented the the most challenges. Personally, here's the reasons why I thought she presented the most challenges. Strength. Uh, I thought Kat is one of the strongest. Well, I still do. I still believe Kat is one of the strongest um, 135ers that they have. Uh, I was wary about how tonight's performance would go because of the back. Um, I've not made any (laughs) silence about that whatsoever. Been plain and simple. Uh, thinking that that could have caused an issue for her tonight. Now, there was nothing tonight that really indicated that. Uh, Not that we really got a chance to see anything in 14 seconds, but she did flip over after coming in and throwing a very, very aggressive knee to the face, uh, landed right in the hands of uh, Ronda, adjusted herself to flip Ronda over, but then Ronda reversed with a great sweep to bring um to to flip to to swing the momentum back on top for her grabbed her uh, had her arm locked in place the minute she came over and all it took all it was after that was a matter of seconds for her to completely secure the arm bar um was a little inverted and then boom tap game over and 14 seconds holler um I really thought that we would see Cat come out um, and improve uh, the striking improvement of Ronda. Uh, it, it was just something that I just assumed. And but and I'm not gonna lie, her rush to the to the for the knee, I didn't mind it 
Yes, it was overly aggressive, but I didn't mind. I didn't mind the strategy, and I like the fact that it was a strategy. Someone was in her ear saying, "Hey, come out and do this." But I think if they had to go back and do it again, they would probably revisit it where she'd come out throwing a knee, but maybe not. I don't know. Maybe not a knee. I don't know. I, I like the knee. I like the fact that she came out with a running knee. But I think that would have only been successful to her if Rhonda was in a crouching position, shooting forward, or something like that. The fact that Rhonda was upright, ready to engage in striking, and here comes this knee. I mean, you're not even taller than Rhonda. So it's not like, like Holly Holm, like who we'll talk about in a second. That is somebody who I think if she was to come with a flying knee to, to Rhonda could probably be effective because she is larger than her and, and her legs are, you know, she's a, she's a, she's built in that on the leg area. Um, but yeah, it's, it's clearly, it's disappointing, not for myself. Cause I'm not any of these guys. I'm not a fighter. Uh, so it's not disappointing for me at all. I'm not one of these punk ass fans who would say, Oh my God, this is the most disappointing fight ever in the world. It's disappointing because, um, like I feel for cat and I, I, uh, we all wanted to see more. All of us wanted to see more, uh, from this fight. And I'm sure even Rhonda wanted to see more and man, say what you want to say about Rhonda, um, AKA my future ex wife. But the girl came over to her, gave her a hug, told her some words of endearment. She she gets it, man. As much as people don't want to say she doesn't get that, she gets that. Like, she's growing up, okay? (laughs) That's all we can say, I guess. I mean, even last night, me, myself, I was critical on some things on Ron, but I have completely not 180 my my thoughts on her, but I I, I just kept my mouth shut. You know, it's, 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 it's about sitting back and observing instead of judging right off the bat. And, and unfortunately, with somebody like Rhonda, um, I, t- towards no ill, you know, will towards her, judged her wrong, but it was more based off of just the opponent selection. I need the rankings to change. Alexis Davis, uh, Misha Tate, they're not the top women who should be fighting against Rhonda again. Because as they pointed out, what is she going to do? Fight all these girls for the third time, for the fourth time? I need to see Betch Korea, who's 10-0. and 0. I need to see Jessica I. I need to see them up in the top. They should be in the top five. I don't even, I wouldn't even mind Misha being number five. And Sarah Kaufman being number four. But I see it as Betch Korea, number two. Jessica I, number three. Then you can have Sarah Kaufman, and then you can have Misha Tate. Um, How Holly Holm moves up in the rankings, I'm not too sure. Um, uh, uh, Clearly, uh, Jessica Andrade is going to drop. Renault, Marion Renault, the the Canadian. she's a top of tenor easily. I mean, she won two fights in the past three weeks. <laughs> so you're, that's someone else that you're going to have to see. These rankings are going to have to change. Um, that is the only way that um, I think we're going to truly see more legitimate competition. I don't want to hear no more talk about there's nobody else out there for her to fight other than Cyborg. But yes, Cyborg is intriguing. And I saw somebody on Twitter just say, and I'm just, this is the only thing I'm going to say about Cyborg on this, on this whole entire thing. And then we're going to move into the rest of the car because there's really nothing else to talk about with the Ronda fight. She's still the champ. She's the greatest right now. She's doing her thing, and we love her. And, and, and anytime she is headlining a card, don't, there's no reason to say that she can't draw. There's no reason to say that she's not a star. She is the number one star in the UFC right now, period. She is bigger than John Jones, Chris Weidman, 
Frankie Egger, Uriah Faber. She she is number one. Kane Velasquez, no. She is. Pettis, no. Melendez, no. Ronda is. Why? Because women want to see Ronda fight. And women rule the world. <laughs> Period. <laughs> you know? <laughs> they run the music industry. When women buy clothes, when women want cars, when women, you know, that's it. And when I can go to a grocery store like I did before tonight, and the people at the grocery store know that I cover fights, say to me, we can't wait to see. This is the old checker ladies at the store. When they say to me, we can't wait to see Ronda fight tonight, that's, there's nothing else that needs to be said, okay? You want to, Conor McGregor is not the Muhammad Ali of, of the UFC. Ronda Rousey is, okay? <laughs> Plain and simple. But in regards to this tweet, someone said that Cyborg has a rushing style and, it, and the exact same thing that just happened to Alpha Cat would, would also happen to uh, Cyborg. Now, Chris Justino is a bruiser, is a brawler, is a dominant figure force. And she even said last night on her interview um, that she has worked on not rushing so much, attacking, but yet taking her time, and it was shown. I mean, Charmaine actually threw the first punch. I think she actually threw the first two punches last night, and, and then we all know what happened after that. So I don't think Cyborg would run in like that. No. And also, I think if Cyborg does run in like that, Cyborg is going to knock her down. She, like, this, like, you think, like, it's almost one of those things where I, I it's like, I kind of want to see Ronda fighting Holly Holm because of the size of Holly, because I think the size of Holly is a lot closer and similar to Cyborg's size than Ronda's size. Um, do, not t do not tweet me saying they're all 135ers or 145. Don't, don't go there. People who fight know what the hell I'm talking about, and people who watch fights consistently know what I mean when I say bigger. Like, the people look bigger. You know, you can see, a, like, like, like I, I, I use her as an excuse, as, a, as someone all the time because I think she's, like, a perfect example. When you see Michelle Waterson in Invicta, the former Animeweight champion fight, she goes from Animeweight to Strawweight overnight. <laughs> like, she is bigger than the other girls that she is fighting. And that's strange because she didn't used to be, but she's a mama now. And she got, you know what I mean? And, and like, and she is, she knows how to, um, to, to work in a lot of muscle and, and things of that nature to present a larger frame at that weight division. And Holly Holm also has that fit, uh, uh, a frame on her as well. And yes, Chris Cyborg has that frame. So I don't agree with that. I'm just going to say that. And then, like I said, about the rankings. And I'm going to talk about Holly Holm right now and Raquel Pennington as we go um, into the co-main event. Now, I know I'm going to hear uh, like guys like Gorgeous George and them um, on Monday and even possibly Ariel Holani and them on Monday talking about that the co-main event really wasn't that great. And, and, you know, I can just hear George talking about, you know, the, the technique is just less than desirable and all that stuff. And here's what I'm going to say. Here's, here's my full analysis of the co-main event. The first two rounds were not the most exciting rounds, pretty much because uh, Raquel just could not get underneath the, the, just the, the space that, that Holly is able to to capture in the cage is, you know, for everything people were talking about, about how her striking would fare in the UFC and stuff like that. Um, I, I was so glad that it was pointed out tonight that most of her boxing matches were won by decision uh, because she does not knock people out with her, with her hands. She does it with her feet. And, you know, 
in the UFC, you got the top women in the world, my friend. So women like Raquel Pennington have jaws, have chins, and she is uh, has a good enough technique herself where she was a lot. She was able to block a lot of those kicks. Yes, her forearm is going to be hurting like hell tomorrow, but she was able to block it. Um, now Holly, great, great footwork, great jab, um, co- the beautiful combinations. Her combinations to the body and to the face. I mean, she. Uh, what do you expect? You know what I mean? Like she's just. There's nothing really she can go wrong with in regards to her striking technique. But there's not a lot that's coming behind it, though, until those legs start flying. And I'm telling you, it's when you watch the legacy fights that she was in. And, you know, and these girls are not too many, you know, not too far removed from amateur status and stuff like that. Um, you know, Holly looks so much bigger than these girls, and she... She really, like, took them apart. Uh, Raquel's not the biggest of the um, 135ers in the UFC, but, man, she uh, she just looked so much more imposing. I mean, it's almost, I almost felt like I was watching Benson Henderson and Brandon Thatch again. That's just how, how big uh, of, a, of an area that Holly was able to cover. And then her footwork, the way that she was able to you know, move, even cut off the, cut it off even more. But I'll give so much credit to Raquel. She pressured her the entire time. So even though a lot of the cage was being cut off by the area that Holly was able to take, Raquel was there, man. She was there the whole entire time in front of her face. And they even had Holly backing up most of the time. So the preacher's daughter and uh, used her leg kicks, used her great combinations and stuff to win a split decision over Raquel Pennington. The third round was fantastic. The third round was great. Um, Raquel found herself, got into it, uh, finally got underneath, got into the clinch, landed some great rights, some great hooks to the face, um, did some damage to the nose of Holly, as we saw at the end with the nose that was bleeding, uh, and, and really made it a good fight at the end. Um, so overall, I wouldn't, I wouldn't sit here and and be one of the people to say that I thought the fight wasn't good at all. I, I really, really enjoyed the fight. It was a very technical fight, um, especially on Holly's end. And I mean, like I said, it just, I just think one of the reasons why some people may not enjoy that fight is just because Raquel really wasn't able to get off too much stuff against her. But then also, um, as mentioned before, uh, in some of my articles that I've written about Raquel, you know, she's a great counterpuncher, so it's not really her game to to um, uh, not necessarily initiate, but, uh, but but produce such an amount of offense at the beginning that's gonna be like uh, maybe always so crowd pleasing. But once she gets warmed up, you know, she kind of reminds me of Eddie Wyland a little bit, where uh, she finds her, she finds you. <laughs> she, her, she definitely finds you in a lot of spots, and, and she did on Holly tonight too, uh, especially in that third round. So it was a great fight by the two ladies in the third round. Um, for the rest of the card, of the main card for UFC 140, 184, um, we saw Jake Ellenberg just really, really show that... Um, the fight that he had against um, Kelvin Gastelum was 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 really no fluke, and the and that he really just found himself in a bad position to lose that fight. But the work that he's been doing lately, the stuff that he's been going and um, working on lately with Edmund, uh, has has really been work improving a lot, man. And uh, his jab looked fantastic tonight, and you know he got a hold of the eye of um, Josh Koscheck and after that happened it, it it Josh just didn't seem like he was up to task anymore after that uh he was constantly wiping his eye you could clearly tell it was becoming a problem um everything he was doing after that was more reactive than um than anything uh he still found a couple shots there 
but you, uh, there was a couple times where he was shooting for takedowns and just completely missing, which made me personally think that he was having some trouble seeing. And uh, when, when you're having some trouble seeing and you got a guy with the power that Jake Ellenberg has and the uh, movement that he has and this just improvement that he's been showcasing lately, um, that's not anybody you want to deal with because Jake is still one of the top welterweights in the world. Um, and he proved it tonight uh, by uh, setting up th- th- maybe the nastiest submission we're going to see all year, especially in regards to the look on Josh's face with the foam and shit coming all out of the side. I mean, how many memes are being created as we speak about those? We'll, we'll just have to see. But uh, it was a, a great north and south choke. Um, Josh tried this crazy spin to get out of it and, and just found himself in more trouble. And, uh, you know, it's it, it would have been interesting to see what would have happened in the fight if uh, the eye wasn't bothering Josh. Um, but it's it seemed as if um, there was a mix-up between the two in the first round, uh, and that's when he got a hold of that eye, and it just, the the fight just wasn't the same after that. Um, But great win for Jake. Be curious to see who they match him up with next. Um, Possibly uh, somebody who won on the prelim card a little bit earlier. Um, The... Alan, um, Joe Ben, and Richard Walsh fight um, ended in a fast fashion. It was just a fast night. <laughs> it was just fast night UFC 184, people. Uh, man, Hollywood is going to be kicking it tonight. Uh, Alan Joe Ban uh, with a great elbow to take out dirty uh, Richard Walsh. Um, we knew this one was going to be a, a striking affair, and actually uh, Richard – Richard Walsh got 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 the better of 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 Allen, um, you know, early in the match, and you know, um, it seemed as if um, it was taking a second for for Joe Ban to get warmed up. But once he did, uh, he uh, really took advantage of a clinch that they had, and and just laid an elbow that that just put Richard in a in a different dimension, and, and luckily the referee had the fortitude to see, I think it was Big John, had the fortitude to see, yeah, it was him, um, that the shot clearly took him out of the match, and he stopped the fight. I mean, that's what a great ref would do. Uh, which, you know, uh, there were some questionable calls by another one of the refs. I'm not going to call out his name because I don't want this to be the focus of, of tonight's um, matches because of, there were some great victories by everyone, uh, but there was some definitely some questionable moments tonight with one of the referees who uh, probably should have stepped in a lot earlier on some of the fights that were going on, uh, because especially during that prelim card on Fox Sports One, uh, because it, it it just it's just too dangerous of a sport, man, to uh, to sit there and let some of these guys get their heads beat in, uh, but. You know, last but not least on the main card, got to talk about the great win by the uh, the deemed true El Kukui, uh Tony Ferguson, who submitted Gleason Tebow, who I couldn't could have swore just fought on the last like two cards back to back, keeping himself busy at a at the latter stages of his career. Um, and you know, and Gleason's one of those guys that has the ability to to kind of go back and forth between some weight classes, but. Uh, You know, Tony Ferguson, man, is one of those guys that, you know, people have been talking about in gyms for a minute saying that um, once this guy gets his moment, um, watch the fuck out, man. And, uh, you know, everybody knew tonight's opponent was a step up in competition for him, uh, but you couldn't tell uh, because he he got in there from the jump, uh, laid some vicious shots on Gleason and and submitted him. I mean, he submitted a guy. That is not easy to finish. A guy that you normally see going the distance in a fight. uh, And and to be honest with you, usually picking up a W. Uh, Top 15 guy uh, for sure. So 
uh, the sky's the limit for Tony, man. Um, be nice to see who they have him matched up with. There's a, a lot of uh, possibilities. I'm thinking that they could uh, probably go. Um, but we're going to see this guy shooting up the division. And that's going to do it for a great um, weekend of mixed martial arts, man. Uh, and I'm exhausted. <laughs> uh, I'm going to see if I can check out some pro wrestling pay-per-view tomorrow. Uh, but, yeah, what can you say? UFC 184 in the books, 14 seconds for Ronda Rousey, a UFC record completely, not just in men or women's, just completely, fastest finish, pay-per-view history. And, um, man, and only in Hollywood. Um, great women's, uh, great weekend for women's mixed martial arts. Uh, we saw who we know to be two of the most dominant forces in mixed martial arts and women's mixed martial arts and in mixed martial arts period, uh, devastate their opponents. And, um, maybe we'll get that fight. But if we don't get that fight, like I said, um, she's not done. Rhonda's not done. There's some other, some other ones out there for her to fight. Uh, but speaking of fights, we're right here at the 26 minute mark. And that's going to be the end of the Vavil Post Fight Punch. Uh, my name is Travis Brown, once again, the editor for Vavil Mixed Martial Arts. You can follow me on Twitter at Travis Nyquil, spelled just like the medicine, but with an extra L, so you know you're doing it well. Um, I hope you guys like the production from Invicta. Uh, Bellator got finished, but I don't know. I'm, I don't know. I don't even know if this is going to come out at all. But this is, and this is UFC 184. Next up for UFC, um, it's a fight night, I believe. Go to UFC.com, and you'll see. It'll pop up. God, Ronda Rousey, great champion. Great night. Talk to you guys again. And deuces. <laughs>